Yep. In the basement. Lord willing. Yeah. <laughs> Surviving. Not quite thriving. It's a dead of winter. But we're making it. Mm -hmm. Kyle, we're making it. We're, we're rendezvoused for making yet another chat cast. <laughs> and the Bass Pro Shop has taken over my entire persona. Yes, it has. <laughs> I'm a little bit tired. I've been playing in the snow a lot this week. <laughs> But, <laughs> I like that that said you that you're tired and it sounds like there'd be like I've done a lot of really you know adult things but then you're like I'm really tired man I'm playing in the snow oh, so we, much we me and the kids and Marie just had an absolute blast because we got about I don't know what six or seven inches yeah pretty intense granted we're not on that Texas vibe but no yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank God but they'll, they'll pray for those people. <laughs> Anyways, we're, we're back at it with another chat cast. I don't know, we've done like about 20 of them at this point. I think this is the 20th one, or the 21st, one of the two. I honestly wouldn't have thought it was that high. I know, but it's interesting, it's, isn't Yeah, it? it's crazy. Well, I edit all the videos, so I know now for sure. Right, I don't pay attention to anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's either 20 or 21. Anyways, we're, we're rambling on here. I wanted to talk about the emotional aspect of art. Mm -hmm. And so the question I had brought up was, is art only an emotionally driven is there any other component to it now I know there's going to be some intellectual part to it but the reason I brought up the question I found it would be interesting to talk about is is the intellectual part itself also driven by emotion now I am completely lost on this so I'm going to just let you start this time and we're going to flip the process up because when I brought this question up you kind of got excited a little bit because okay so one of the things i like to think about i was mainly taught to think about when creating art is like who's your audience going to be why are you creating this and so like the idea that art is just pure emotion from pulling out from the inside of you and putting it on a canvas putting it on the paper on a you know on an instrument whatever it be uh that it's extracting emotion but if your audience like what's the purpose of showing it to your audience you know are you trying to get them to empathize with you to get to understand this emotion to understand this idea to you know what is it about what you're making like who are you wanting to see it you know and so the idea that if, if it was purely emotion and there was no other like into there was no intellectual like shaping going on of the idea or emotion that you're you're putting on whatever you're creating, then um, there would be no reason to show it to other people because part of the reason that, uh, like, if it was purely emotion, you would really be the only one that would understand what you made. And I know a lot of people that would probably argue with me and be like, yeah, that's the point. Who cares if anybody else sees it? Mm. But that would mean that I don't want anybody to see it because the audience is gonna be me. Yeah. Which is fine if that's what you wanna do. But if you want other people to see it, there has to be other aspects than emotion. There has to be some sort of skill or intellectual, like, um, it, it's kind of like, um, you know, when they like make swords and stuff like that and they heat the metal and then they smash it with the hammer and it beats off the impurities. That's kind of like what's happening with intellect. The emotion would be the hot iron and then your intellect is beating off all the impurities from that because you need to express your idea more universally. You need to find a way to package it, to present it to other people. And that comes not from emotion, but intellect and um, more thoughtful, I guess, processes. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think you're doing a great job. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> describing this and I don't really have much to add because I think that it, it's you're helping me make sense with this the reason I came up with the question is because I didn't really know how to process it right and I thought it'd be neat to bounce off of you and it is it's it's producing fruit so a good example of it because I don't know a lot about music but I know a little so a good way that, like I'm thinking of it too is like so if you had a song that you wanted to write and you just wanted to pull that emotion out of you but you didn't know anything about proper keys or uh, scales or anything like that. And so you just put chords and notes out there. Like, 
it might uh, it might make you feel a certain way, but because it doesn't follow any sort of actual structure, it has all this impurity in it that makes it hard for other people to gravitate to that emotion. It just makes them feel uncomfortable rather than make them feel whatever you're feeling. I see what you're getting at. Okay. So it's about if you're expressing something dark, dark colors. If you're expressing something vibrant, vibrant colors. Right. Okay. I get what you mean. So so major chord, minor chord, whatever key that you're trying to play your music in can help establish that. So I, I see I see now where it is. It is, but who's the ultimate driver, right? That's that's what I'm trying to figure out by unpacking this question yeah. is, is it the intellectual part that's the starting point? Is it the emotion? I guess it's probably a case by case. It depends on where the artist is, where their entry point is in this equation. I, ultimately, is that what it is? Yeah, because I, f- I feel like... Because I, I know that I can come at a song where I'm like, Okay, specifically when I write I, I, like a death metal song, mm-hmm. it comes from a standpoint of usually athleticism. That's the, one of the me- reasons I still like it. Okay, it it's, keeps boiling further and further down to the, to the point to where it's just simply because it's difficult to play. Yeah. Well, before I kind of liked the imagery and everything, and now it just kind of feels like cheap horror movies to me, right? Yeah. But when I was a kid, I thought it was cool, yeah. right? But now, for me, it's just like, well, there's nothing, in heavy metal, in my opinion, there's nothing on earth that quite challenges a musician, specifically a guitar player, as deeply. Because you have all of the, it encompasses so much. The things I've learned from trying to play what little jazz I know, or, um, you know, what colloquially someone would recognize as blues, like B.B. King or Stevie Ray Vaughan or something like that, or, what you learn from classic rock or what you learn from 80s metal bands you know it just has this, it, classical music it has all these components to it metal is just great it's just a nice apex for all of the genres in my opinion and it pushes the envelope of musicianship so i rambled all of that to say i come at a death metal song from a perspective of technique in what i want to showcase in that regard and then i add the emotional flair to it but if I write something that's not metal I come at it from how do I want to convey a spoken message or a feeling yeah and then I build around that so I, I'm reinforcing the idea that I guess it's the entry point yes you might have an entry point where you're like I want to show off this cool sculpting technique right well, what does this sculpting technique do this sculpting technique essentially represents something that's very visceral Okay, I don't know. I don't know anything about sculpting, but I'm just trying to like vibe on that, right? No, yeah, I mean... And and then, so then that means the emotion that'll be conveyed from a technical standpoint kind of pushed it into an emotion of something aggressive. Or is this technique will do something smooth and very polished, right? right? And then I want to convey something that's round and not jagged, right? To have this smooth and kind of a polished sensation, soothing, right? Mm -hmm. And that's so you can come at it from that technique angle, or you can come at it from the you know the emotion, and then what technique supports that. Now, I'm going to ask you an interesting question, and then we'll finish this chat cast. Okay. This is a cool thing. Just came to me, hot off the press, live. Ooh. Could be its own thing, but we're throwing in a dub Ooh. on this one. <laughs> a dub question is a part two to this. Do certain mediums. Are, do they favor favor different entry points? Does visual art favor the entry point of emotions versus intellect? Does music favor the injection of intellect or emotion? Is it a combination? How is that balanced? And I'm gonna let you finish that thought. Good, because I don't know how to. <laughs> so, because that's an interesting point. Because like, they're different, but they're the same. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm coming to. The way that you kind of like ingest both would be like, obviously one, you could, if you were unable to hear, you could still look at a good painting and feel or think or experience whatever inspired the creation of that. And you could empathize with that or whatever it is that you do with art. Whereas like if you couldn't see for some reason and you could hear, then music would be the mode of receiving that that you would 
specifically need. So, but the techniques within both like mediums is similar, but I don't know if one's more emotional and over intellectual. Yeah, right? It's yeah. interesting. And, and I guess it would probably depend on the genre. My answer to that is it's probably genre dependent. Mm -hmm. You know, and metal is a very intellectual. That's why I still do, and, and do decent at it, right? Because right. I don't, I have a problem interfacing with that emotional component of myself. Maybe probably because of trauma you experience when you're developing or something like that. I don't know. But like I have... I don't, I just don't really use that part of me, right? I feel like if I let it out, it just ends up being used as a weapon against me. So I tend to just let it be forgotten, not even protected, <laughs> just to the, my detriment, just like I'm neglected, yeah. not even, not, not protected, neglected. <laughs> and so then I have a difficult time pulling that out. And so that's why I also still gravitate towards metal, but I could see both. Like if you're going to try to make something that's painted Right, I could see that you would want to really have the um, techniques that you use, maybe the texture that you can add with the particular paint. And so, as a way to show the difference between both, but yet the similarities, I actually was going to tell you this earlier in the week, just as a conversational thing, but I'll bring it up now. Is I was thinking about like why I feel like me personally, like metal and heavy music, per, like it produces more emotion to me okay and so in like when you're drawing painting whatever um, a lot of the times what you want is this like tonal range and a lot of people especially when you're doing like charcoal drawing and stuff like that will try whenever they're trying to make highlights they'll get frustrated because their drawings kind of look really gray okay. because they're trying to erase and make white pop more and the thing that is a technical thing that's really cool so if you're trying charcoal drawing or something like that this is a good tip too uh is that instead of making your light whites wider the best way to experience tonal range is to make your darks darker because it will making your darks as dark as they can will make your whites appear more vibrant next to them and so it creates this tonal range so the fact that in a metal song you can get so heavy with the music, it makes when the music's lighter, it seem lighter than if it was like a light song all the way through. So it makes the dynamic rise and fall of the music, in my opinion, more emotionally uh, versatile. Yeah. Hmm. And so that's a way that both mediums are the same, but there's different techniques to achieve the same kind of experience you know what I mean does that make sense that makes sense Shani and I said that <laughs> no it's cool but here's what just happened we have answered no questions <laughs> but I like where this is going I'm gonna go ahead and put a time out on this clearly we can keep going into this we might have to do a part two on this one okay that's pretty cool well until next time <laughs> peace <laughs>